It is fairly typical for me to be like really late. Is it? Oh, you know, last week I forgot to put it onto Publix, <laughs> so hardly anybody could see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, it was just like, oh yeah, Liz is not knowing what she's doing yet again. I think, to be honest, my regular viewers know that I'm about as disorganised uh, as they come, and I'm going to spend the first few minutes faffing around before I say hello to anybody. Okay. Because uh, it's about the only way I can can actually get organised. So it's going to be no better with you than it was with Mr J. So hello everybody, welcome to <laughs> today's live chat. This is Lorella. I'm Lorella, uh, hi. So if you don't know uh, Lorella's channel, Lorella is uh, Lorella, Plan B Orchard and Farm. She's a really good friend and just thought she would hop on a plane and then on another plane and then on a coach and then in a car and 23 hours later, she was here, oh, so she's she here for eight days, nine days, something, something like, like that. that. Um, Ten, including travel at both ends. Yeah, so we're we're not quite halfway through, but we thought we'd come and say hello. We would have done a live chat tomorrow, but we have other plans for the day tomorrow. As long as it doesn't rain too much, we will be out in the garden almost the whole day uh, doing a project that we will film and will appear on my channel at a later date. So uh, let's say a few welcomes. So we've got, uh, so Chris is here. Hi, hi Kim. Uh, hi Aru. Kim is surprised that I'm here. She didn't know. <laughs> hi Kim, I'm here. Yes, for real. Hi Inga uh, and Bev. Hello, hello. Let me just gonna scroll down the chat a little bit. Oh, it's nice. It's not too. I busy have yet. progressive glasses, so. The only part I see the screen out of is down here. So it, pardon me doing my nose at the, you. That's so I can read what's on the screen. That's what, well, I do that. So between <laughs> us, we, I'll do the school teacher thing in one way. You do it the other way. Uh, hello, Anne uh, and Louise and Helen and Amelia, uh, Mariola, uh, Michael, 66, Red 66. I think that's Nikki, but if not, uh, tell me off. Uh, Graham and Pauline. Uh, Rebecca, Hillary, Susan, and Jen. Hi, Jen. Um, and <laughs> Chris that? says he had a layover in Amsterdam once, but didn't count that. But um, I don't know whether he remembers. We actually had 15 days in Europe together. So I don't know <laughs> why, <laughs> what he's thinking of when he didn't count Amsterdam. <laughs> Lakeside Homestead with uh, Dave and Karen. Hello. Uh, Roy, hi. I may well say uh, hello to people more often. Not. Hello, Louise. Louise, are you? So, two questions, you, two things it could be. Are you Louise Horton, who is on Twitter? Are you Louise Horton that I went to school with? It's not the same person. So, I'm just trying to find out which it is. <laughs> uh, hi, Tony. And the other Tony, hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Yellow Labrador. Benny, hi. So, yes, what I usually do at the beginning of a live chat is invite people to tell us uh, where they're from and what the weather's like. So we've got yes. an idea of, would you like to do a weather report for uh, for Southwest Wales? Sure. The weather is, it's a wet rain. So is, Yeah. That's yes. Cool. And I don't know the outside temperature, but I'm going to guess that in Fahrenheit, it's probably up. For 50s, maybe even into mid 60s. So it's cool autumn weather. And I don't know what the Celsius conversion that would be. Okay, wet and about 12 to 14. I'm just checking that we are both in the screen. I'm going to turn this. I need to shift. No, that's right. right. Look, okay. how about that? Can we, okay, can, can people see you better now? Mm -hmm. yes. There was a, a question about um, what the rules were for traveling and how I was able to get here. Do you want me to? Okay, well, just very briefly, Yes, it depends on how many vaccines you've had, but if you're double vaccinated and you're going from a uh, green country to a green country, the answer is, it depends where you are, where you're traveling to, which day of the week it is, and where we are. And it is constantly changing, because you were saying something had changed this morning. So we're not going to give travel advice because, Correct. Correct. because what we tell you now is only right. going to be what was relevant when I had to come. When you had to come from where you were going to where you were coming to and it won't be relevant anywhere else so right. i'm really sorry but i'm going to say is you will if you want to do to traveling you're going to have to do homework 
Lorella and I both lost a bit of sleep and quite a lot of hair and I'm a lot greyer than I was <laughs> when we started organising this because it was fairly complex wasn't it yes uh, and also there was the added factor that I flew into London and then crossed into Wales so I had to make sure that I was doing correct things for both countries so, so yeah. it was a bit complicated so been... I guess we could just say it's complicated <laughs> So uh, Grove Organic is here. Uh, it's a cool night here in Sydney, about 14 degrees C, which is about what it is here. So actually, I think it's a little bit cooler here. Uh, and Owen is here. Hi, Owen. Hello. Long time no chat. Uh, Stephen B is here. Hi. And I also just want to say uh, hello, and I don't know whether uh, she's here yet or not, to Sandy. Uh, Sandy has become uh, a new patron, so she's joined us over on the Patreon uh patreon page in the last week so uh hello and thank you for joining us there um so have we got some bits that we can read so susan's saying it's wet and windy here in east midland so that's a bit further north than here and further over to the east so it's almost the center of england um ruth's saying she missed me at the malvern show uh but you did manage to join I decided not to go to the Malvern show, so she's just checking that she did turn the cooker off. Uh, not to go to the Malvern show for three reasons. One, I was actually a bit concerned about the, about meeting up with so many people when I've actually done quite a lot of not meeting people in the last 18 months. Uh, two, uh, the fuel crisis was uh, happening or not happening, and uh, locally here, you couldn't get very much fuel and my concern was that I would get there and not be able to get enough fuel to get back or that we would just not be able to, to top up again. And the third reason was that I didn't want to risk bringing anything bug-wise of any kind of illness uh, back from Malvern when Lorella was arriving two days later. So uh, all things being equal, I will be at Malvern Spring Show if they do the spring show and I'll be at the autumn show next year, but it will again depend on that thing that's been dominating our lives for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Chris says at my home in Missouri, it's 20 degrees Celsius. Nice. Well, that's, look at that, the, the fire. So I've spent about an hour and a half trying to get our wood burner to light and it's just not been wanting to play. Now well, we've come to sit in here, <laughs> instead of sitting in there, I can hear it crackling away. Yes, I can really? see it. I can see the flames. <laughs> so uh, it's windy and rainy in northern France. Um, it's uh, it's raining uh, in... Oh, Owen's not very far from us, so that's okay. fine. Um we got raining heavily here so tony's a bit further east than us have we got anybody on the uh, mainland european continent we've got northern spain france yeah oh northern northern france uh we usually have somebody who joins us from belgium tracy usually joins us from belgium so no doubt at some point she'll pop in and uh from claire uh, it says hello liz and norella from a wet and windy reading uh I'll be making a cob loaf while watching. 22 degrees in my kitchen. Very nice. Hello, Alan. How are you? That's what Alan's popped in. And we've got overcast here in South Florida. I never think of, of Florida being overcast. <laughs> Every time I've been there, all once. <laughs> all <laughs> once when I was there. I actually went to Florida for nearly three weeks. And the weather was incredible. It was so hot and it was so humid, but they had the most amazing rainstorms every afternoon. So you get this like really short, fierce rainstorm and with uh, thunder and lightning. And then half an hour later, it would be completely dry again. We were talking earlier on about, uh, about the amount of rain right. that we get in our various different places. So there's a group of four of us who chat um, on a very regular basis and basically we all have pretty much the same amount of rain or precipitation rain and snow between us but the three of you in america all had 90 about 90 days where the rain came down 
and we've got 249 days where the rain came down. But it was still the same amount of rain. So right. I can't imagine how heavy your rainstorms must be. <laughs> and it's hard to show on film mm. the rain. We've tried. We've tried. And it's it, the camera doesn't pick it up that well. No, it's, it's been an absolute eye opener because I always think of it being just like really wet here in Wales. But that's because it's the number of days. Right. As opposed to. It's two and three quarters the number of days. Yeah. So more than double the number of days that you have precipitation, but in inches, the same total rainfall. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if I'm shaking. The... Well, you might be shaking the table. I'll try people aren't going to mind. Okay. Yeah, people won't mind us being shaky. Yeah. <laughs> they won't mind. <laughs> yeah, Tony says the camera makes it look like it's not, not raining. raining. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's have a little look. Uh Norma says that it's cold and wet now in Glasgow. It was sunny this morning. Not unusual here in the west of Scotland. Uh, Ruth says the best place to capture how hard it's raining is in the pony tunnel. Yes, because then you hear it. Yeah. We were saying this morning when we went out to, to feed the birds, kind of wandered out in the rain over to the barn, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the rain's got really bad. And it's like, no, it's just we can <laughs> hear it on the barn now. So. Yeah. Damp and grim in Manchester. Yeah, I think we're thumbs down for a shaky table. Sorry, John. I'll try and keep it at a minimum. <laughs> I don't mean to make anybody seasick. Well, no, but you know, they've seen my videos. My they're Johnny shaky on a regular basis as well. So uh hi Chrissy, how are you? Um so Chrissy is uh, a very old, not in number of years, as in longevity, a, a very old friend of Mr. J's. Oh, they've I, known each other for like forever and then some. Nice to meet you. Wait, I did have somebody from Cape Town. Oh, yes. So, Hi, Alison is. Hi, Alison. It's near, was it almost double the distance? We were trying to find another town on the globe that this. That's the same distance that I traveled. Yes. And so it's not as far as Cape Town. No. It's not as far. Uh, as from Wales to Cape Town, but it wasn't far off it. It really wasn't that far because it was over, you've come over 4,000 miles. It's a long way for a visit. Um, and um, I just popped over for a spot of tea. Yeah. Well, how many cups of tea have I made you? One. <laughs> well, but it wasn't because she didn't offer. I've been choosing to have coffee instead. <laughs> so, uh, hello, Claudine. Um, so, yeah, we were trying to work out what was four and a quarter thousand miles from here. Uh, and Cape Town was more, wasn't it? It was more like five six. and a bit, five or six. Yes. Yeah. So it was halfway down Africa, which is quite a long way. So thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, no, I thought it was quite a good. Do so, you know, I have a list of things I want to talk about. And oh. It's really short. So like, usually it goes on for pages. <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> Um, let's have a look. So Ruth's saying, uh, "How has everyone's harf harvests been? How's your harvest been?" M my harvest has been minimal. Mm -hmm. So something that my viewers on my channel will be familiar with, but perhaps most of yours might not be, is that uh, my husband. We found out in March, April. I, I kind of lost in April. That hang on a he, moment. I am okay. going to turn this around to talk to you. Okay. So you can talk to them, and I'm going to just step off camera for a second. Okay. And get a drink. Okay. So my husband Chris, who's in the chat as Plan B Orchard and Farm, we found out that he had a cancerous tumor on his kidney in March, and then uh, very quickly after that, we went to a bunch of specialists and tests. And then within a month or six weeks, he was having invasive surgery to remove this tumor off his kidney. And then another six weeks of recovery. So that took up most of my gardening season. That was, we found out right around the time that I would have been planting everything out. I had lots of starts, but I just made a conscious decision to um, postpone the garden so that I could just focus on family. So I did not have a bumper harvest. However, 
the things I did get in, um, bell peppers and tomatoes, I have been harvesting those and I harvested, uh, I've already harvested all my, what kind of squash, butternut squash. So I got seven, six, seven, I don't know, I've eaten some already. So a pretty minimal harvest. How's everybody else's doing? Did anybody else say how theirs are? Nobody has said, oh, little, can I say hello to some people? I'm going to, I don't know yeah. why I asked permission. Um, hi, Vicki, Vicki and Sammy from Little Creek Homestead. It's good to see you. And, uh, oh, and Rue's life says, I hope he's doing okay. He is. I should have finished the story. So he had quite a miraculous uh, recovery. The, they were able to get all of the cancer with clear margins with the tumor. And when the tumor had seemed to be in the center, by the time of surgery, they actually only took out less than 5% of his actual kidney. So much better results than we could have hoped for even then. His last tests were still cancer free. So uh, I think he goes back in January and as long as nothing shows up, then he just has to come back once a year to retest. So he's doing quite well, still some soreness and they had to go in and like five different spots. He's, I don't know if you guys know the Kool-Aid man <laughs> commercials that we had. It was a big picture of Kool-Aid, um, which is a, a beverage kind of like squash, I guess. And it had a face on the picture. It was a big character. And anyway, his scar kind of looks like the Kool-Aid man on his belly. But other than that, he's doing quite well. So thank you for asking. So next year is going to be my year to come back and just hit the garden big and fast and strong and hopefully better than ever. All right. Let's see. Um, right. Oh, so some people are talking about their harvests. Good. I don't know where you want to. So I just wanted to walk away so you could talk about that without the distraction of me pulling faces at you. Yeah. No, I mean now. I don't know yeah. what you want to address here. I'm gonna Let's have a look. look. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's always another gardening season, uh, but farming time takes but farming takes priority every time. Yeah. So Hillary's had French beans, garlic, broccoli, and eggs have been excellent and other things as well. Alison says, so sorry. Hope your husband's well now. So lots of... Chris, you're having lots of love sent out to you here. Uh, and Chris is saying thumbs up. Yes, please do. If you have an opportunity, uh, hit the thumbs up button because it tells YouTube that you're enjoying the live chat. And the other thing that I'm going to uh, invite you to do is in the top of the description of this live chat is a link to Lorella's channel. Um, and Lorella is slowly heading towards 10,000 subscribers. And it would just be amazing if we could just push her over uh, the 10,000 subscribers while you were here in the UK. I would love that. That would be an amazing thing. Yes, it would. So I'm going to invite you uh, to, to subscribe to her channel. And then the other thing you need to do is actually watch a couple of videos at some point. So I will keep on uh, posting some links to um, videos from Norella and to her channel uh, over the next week or so, because that would be an amazing thing to do. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't be me doing it. It would be. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks all to you. all of you. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, so I don't farm during the summer uh, in Florida. Uh, I've never had a harvest like this uh, because earlier this year I started renting an allotment. It was already planted with perennials. Uh, Rue had a really slow start. Okay, so Rue uh, was part of a really good collab uh, started by... Rue, help me out. Started by Rebecca at I've got there at mornings at the allotment about how so many of us seem to have had a really slow start to our gardens, uh, and then they caught up. So I think Anya just I caught Anya saying that her mother had been in remission for fifteen years. Yes. Yes. Um, and then some people are saying they're already subscribed. So thank you guys. Very kind words that you're saying. I appreciate that. Marianne's that. saying it's wet and windy in Denmark. I love it when people join in and then they still keep on telling us. <laughs> now I like that because it means that I know that people are, are fairly newly joined into the chat. Um, Stephen's saying this year didn't really get any harvest, slow recovery from long COVID. Sorry to hear that. I hope you're feeling better and that it doesn't go on for much longer. Um our next garden may be the most important ever, Chris is saying. Oh, yes. 
Yep. I don't I don't know if it's worldwide, but our grocery store prices have been going up and up. So yeah, I think I'll um, have to. Yeah. Yeah. So something about our farm that I'm very happy about is that we provide all the meat for our own farm. So we don't purchase any meat. Um, but we are very there's a huge disparity between the meat we provide for ourselves and the veg we provide for ourselves the, the veg amount is very very tiny so we really need to increase that and preserving so those are two things that we're going to work on next year for sure okay so i'd like you to just read what tony's written there for you thank you how's your thank channel you, under 10k your videos are awesome i think the Loretta's <laughs> videos are fantastic now i've actually <clears throat> i've been watching uh, uh editing and piecing together so i know that the amount of work that she's putting into all of her videos is just incredible um and and each each video tells a story isn't it pretty much so you get a train to you would you like to share with people the size of your plot sure and and what you've got growing animal wise there what, what okay you keep, yes well, no, and the want, whole yeah, basic yeah, summary yeah. of what yeah. you do all right so um we lease two and a half acres from my mother. Um, she has a farm there, but she, not a working farm, like a hobby farm or retirement farm. I don't know if people do that here when they retire, move to the country and buy land. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yes, yes, of course they do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing, but that is a thing that often in the United States people do as they get older. They'll live somewhere where they have a little more land. And um, so we are on her property but on our two and a half acres we raise rabbits chickens ducks um, pigs we we buy piglets we don't raise the sow and the um, boar um, and we have one two three four five head of cattle right now so three two cows a heifer and two calves and I'm trying to be conscious of not bumping the table. Yeah, well, I'm bumping the table because I'm <laughs> right. writing there. And then um, we also have bees. So we have beehives. And we have done turkeys before, but I don't know that we will do any more. We have a baby orchard. So in our orchard, we have peach trees, pear trees, and apple trees. We have um, a kitchen garden. And then I had, where I had pigs last year, I did a sunshine garden, which had sunflowers and melons and pumpkins and things like that in it. I think that's all. I think that's all. Chris will chime in if I forgot something. He'll yeah. let me know. So I'm just going to go back a bit. Pi saying, uh, this summer was my second season on my allotment. Uh, it was a hot mess when I got it. Uh, so the first two seasons, I've been doing my best to plant berry bushes uh, and preparing the soil, etc. Benny... Uh, I've had a great garden season except for onions. I'm sorry to hear about the onions. Uh, oh, but probably my best season. Oh, well, then that's not nothing to be sorry about, but I am sorry about the onions. Uh, Pam, Blue Pixie says, uh, we lost all our tomatoes, all 29 plants. So this year has been a really bad year for, for blight, for people oh. here, for tomatoes, and, and lots mm -hmm. of people like, um, so Tony, um, Gizmos and Gadgets, are lost a ridiculous number of tomato plants. Um, Tony Simplify Gardening was just saying that he's the opposite way around to you in terms right. of he grows, he grows all his veg and, and buys in his meat and then, yeah, so he grows his food and veg. Yeah. Um, and Heather asks, how's the food forest coming along? Would you like to comment on my tiny little baby food forest out there? My very, well, it's not tiny, but my very young. No, it's, it's a very large food forest. The, the plants... I guess a lot of them are still tiny when you think yeah. about the trees. It's beautiful, you guys. I have spent as much time every break in the rain out there filming all of the different plants with the sun shining through them. Um, and I've been learning so much. I had my first taste of, am I going to say it correctly, bergamot yes. leaf, um, and which is what they put in, wait, Earl Grey tea. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was really fun. And she's just such a wealth of knowledge, all the plant names that she knows. And, and I just told her, I said, 
after I start working on the video, I'm just going to have you message me the names because I'm not going to remember <laughs> them. I'm not going to remember the names of all of them. And it's, it's really exciting to see it at the beginning because now when I go home and I watch your videos and I see it grow, I'm going to remember what it looked like. And it's going to be fun to, to see it from overhead. I think, especially yeah. to, to see it like fill out and fill in. That's yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I've been trying to do a, a drone shot once a month. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that during the winter, uh, but that, that's my hope. So Kevin said, why well, worm killed off my crops uh, two years in a row. So I decided to do a bird aviary next year. Uh, Alan, hi Alan. Oh, I did say hi earlier on. Hi Alan. Uh, last harvest of outside cucumbers uh, and still one of the new crimson variety tomatoes on the plot, uh, giving a huge amount of tomatoes. So I've got a feeling the crimson ones, are they the ones that are blight resistant? So just please let me know. Are they, is it the crimson crush or crimson blush or one of those that's supposed to be blight resistant? Um, Anya. Uh, it's just saying, well, fantastic, you're living the dream. Can't wait to check out your channel. Thank you. Sarah, hello, thank you for joining us. And Evelyn's here. I think she's Evelyn's in the only here. place it's not raining today around the world. Uh, in Portugal, <laughs> yes. So uh, Evelyn used to live in Scotland. She came and did uh, my first course with me. Oh, okay. first uh, like in person course mm -hmm. uh, at our old site. Uh, and she has been hugely encouraging of me learning how to can to pressure can so uh, that's been very lovely uh so inga says you've got why oh, oh look did you see that There's something about wild tomatoes there i've got wild tomatoes they seem not to have like the small yellow tomatoes uh jen i grew my first successful cauliflower yes wow Okay, so that yes is that every time I try and grow cauliflower, they, they grow a white head and then they, the rain gets them and they just go to the soggy brain. Oh, so, okay. Um, I'm always very impressed when people can grow cauliflowers. <laughs> um, so she's been taking on a new plot, so it's been more about clearing. Uh, and Haunted Woman Central Centre, that beautiful. Uh, Welsh rain our way, we've had one and a half, 1.7 inches total. In my yard in northeast Oklahoma, we probably so had not that far last, from us. Probably had that last Tuesday. I would have thought. <laughs> probably. Well, you were right. It was a downpour. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because I just stayed inside where it was cozy, recovering from travel. So it was it was an okay day to be rainy. The next day was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it was. You could have brought it with you for the whole week, not just the day. <laughs> <laughs> so Louise asked about flea beetles. What are they? So I'm going to invite uh, Tony from uh, Simplified Gardening. Would you mind having a chat uh, to where, to Plan B Orchard and Farm? Can you answer to them uh, some stuff about flea beetles? Uh, if you have done a, a blog post about so Tony at simpl simplifiedgardening.com has got hundreds and hundreds of really really useful blog posts about gardening they are just all about gardening and it, you can kind of search for almost anything and it's it's there uh, so uh, he may well have something if not could you share that uh, in some text please tony we're getting behind in the chat now. um so susan said uh, the weather gave me a late start this year but i've managed to grow two types of onions uh, spring onions beetroot and carrots and then French beetle beans, parsnips, cabbages, yes, brilliant. Uh, Pam says, yes, they're crimson crush that are the, and blush are both blight resistant. Um, Claire says, what are your top three crops uh, you would, what were the top three crops that you'd hate if you couldn't grow them? So effectively, what, what three things wouldn't you want to be without? Right. Bell peppers, for sure, because both Chris and I, that, that is probably the main vegetable that we use in our, in our house, in our cooking, almost every meal. Um, for me, butternut squash, Chris doesn't eat them, but that's okay. I use it in lots and lots of things and I love it. And I don't know if I have a third. I have so many things that I would, that we eat that I would like to be able to grow that I haven't quite mastered onions. I grew a beautiful crop of onions and then harvested them and hung them to dry and they never dried. They all rotted. So that was a problem for me. 
Um, onions, carrots, our ground is really rocky and soily, so I really need to either probably do raised beds and get some loamy soil well, you going. You've got four now. Right, but those are what I want to. So, I have oh, two yeah. that I would hate to not be able yeah. to, and then two, two that I would love to. Oh, yeah, well, that's cool. Is that okay? I cheated. Yeah, you can cheat. Okay. Uh, so mine would be uh, onions. Can onions go with garlic as well? Onions and garlic is one. Are we allowed to do that? <laughs> Alliums. Sure. Alliums. There we go. Alliums. <laughs> um, parsnips, because I use them for so many things. And, oh, oh, gosh, yes, that would be difficult. Uh, red cabbage. Hmm. Because uh, we eat a lot of red cabbage, both in salads and braised in the winter. Yeah. So probably those would be my three. Um, okay, that was a good. That was a good question. Uh, so really good, but a bit of advice from Tony there. Don't take on a huge project uh, throughout the summer. It's hard to do when you need to water and so much weed and water so much. So if you think back, whenever I've done, whenever I've added a, a new section of my garden, mm -hmm. I've always done that transformation bit during the winter. So it's ready for me to then be growing in the next year rather than trying to be growing everything as well as transforming something. So it was just why in some ways it's quite nice to have moved here sort of towards the end of the season because I can now do lots of getting stuff ready so that it'll really take off next year. Um, Sarah's saying she's grown one small but perfectly formed cauliflower but it was all hollowed, hollowed out by slugs inside. Oh, yes, that's so what, sad. what happens to me. Uh, so Rue did six successful collies this year. Wow. Okay, so I'm kind of quietly in all. Heather, uh, I'll take some rain in California. Yeah. Garlic mm. harvest was small. So when we were in Malta last week, I bought uh, two punnets of jumbo garlic cloves. Good idea. What's a punnet? Uh, a punnet is like a, an open-topped container and it very often has holes in oh, the side okay. of it so that to let the air breathe right. through so whatever you put in it doesn't then rot. Uh, we are loads behind. I'm going to just skip. Oh, maybe not. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, there we go. We're doing all right. So Tony's talking about flea beetles. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so Alan Sane's going to try the Rob Smith range of cauliflower next year. And I did see somebody else say that they had just joined us and I want to say hello to them. Um, so, Constantina, hello. Hi, thank you for joining us. And somebody else. Sonia's here. And I'm really sorry because I did see someone else say that they Wait, had joined. Wait, right, go up a little bit right here. Sam. Hello, Sam. Thank you for joining us. We got there in the end. Uh, Stevie says, new here and to veg, but managed to get some small crops this year, hoping to expand a bit the next year. Uh, let's have a little look. Um, Tony says, thank you for such nice words about the blog. Well, you know, speakers we find. Chris wants to try growing some horseradish. He's going to grow that in a container, isn't he? My husband, Chris, yes. said that? Yes. Oh. He's going to grow it in a container. Okay. It's quite invasive. Okay. It will, and, you, and it's got massively long tap roots. So think... Think dock leaves that we were looking at, right. the garden, and mm -hmm. then and then make the roots bigger and much much okay. longer and fierce. So, so we have those cattle. Um, what do they call those? The buckets that they give the the mineral buckets that they give to cattle. Have you seen? You mm -hmm. probably see yes, them. Yes, 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 I don't yeah. know if you guys have the same thing here. They're about this big around and about this. Deep. Yeah. So would that perfect work? Okay, holes. So we'll do bottom. one of those. Yeah. Well, food holes actually not in the, not in the bottom. But in the sides, so the taproot doesn't go down. So, the yeah. So okay. In the sides, not too high up because otherwise it'll fill up with water. Sure. So leave you know drain like, holes, a little, yeah. little inch or so before you put the holes in it, and then that should be okay. We'll do that. Be, Remind yeah. me, Chris. So yes, Tony's just saying it's like a dog on steroids. So yeah, uh, Anita's here. Hello, hiya. <laughs> um, so Ava Place said I made uh, made all my raised plants as pallets. Brilliant. Uh, I also saw somebody else was going to try the cardboard raised beds oh, they saw you do. Oh, brilliant. And Felicia's saying, 
Isn't this great? See, I see the name. I start reading that, and then I lose it. Sorry about that. Uh, so she's got three uh, three seeded artichokes, had two plants, and has got several globes on it. Nice. I was showing Liz a video a couple of years ago. I was in Southern California visiting uh, gardens, like a botanical gardens, a public gardens. I don't know what it would be called. And with a friend, and I, I pointed at this flower across the way, and I was like, look, that flower looks just like an artichoke. And she said, which flower? You mean the artichoke? I didn't realize <laughs> that the artichoke grew up on a stem and was a big, well, you know what? Flower like we that. don't know until we know, do we? So, <laughs> so I just always giggle at myself. I'd only ever seen them after they were harvested. So Anointed Women Essentials uh, is saying, I'm growing blueberries in 30-gallon million mineral tubs. Can't speak today. Uh, Chelsea, Vicky was helping oh, me out. Like, Thank you, Vicky. Mineral yes. tub. So, uh, so she's also making raised beds out of recycled pig barn wood. Yeah. So, uh, Ava saying, uh, you, Hugh, and Charles are literally who got me started this year. Hooray! Thank you. And good. And keep going. That's the main thing. I think it's just you're a, in good company there. I am in good company, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> um, so Louise is going to grow some Chinese vegetables so she can extend the season. I'm excited to experiment. So I tried various different Chinese leaves, Chinese cabbage, Mizuna, Mibuna, uh, Pak Choi's, all those sorts of things. And then I actually ended up finding one mustardy one, that I, one mustard type leaf that I liked. Uh, I do like Chinese cabbage, but I kind of never seem to get it to grow without bolting. So I've now accepted that I now grow uh, quite a boring, uh, and it's not boring because I like it, but I, I I grow just more like a standard head lettuce, a, not a loose leaf, but it's not a type head, uh, and that's winter density, and that will grow here right through right through the year, particularly if we've got a polytunnel. I grew some beautiful ones in, pod, in the pod, pod polytunnel in our last place. Um so, in Missouri, we face a lot of heat pressure and bug pressure. We have lots of bug pressure. The beetles, I probably had seven different types of beetles. Okay, so and every time I watch one of Lorella's gardening videos, um, at the end of this, I'm, I will add a couple of links. And, but she'll go through and she'll say, oh, the squash bugs this or the stink bugs that. And these are things that, that mostly, and I'm touching wood here or knocking on wood, depending on where you're from, um, that we don't end up with them over here because you have got so many more predators, pests to contend with. Do you so, want to share about some of them while I walk away again? Oh, sure. I'm just going to go get another drink and cough. <laughs> okay. and like, so Vicky can probably help me out in the chat if I miss some. But we have um, Japanese beetles come through, and they fly in and eat everything. And then we have squash bugs, which will decimate the squash, uh, melons, anything like that, pumpkins. We have um, horn, tomato hornworms. Um, we've got aphids. I mean, we have, I, I did take pictures of one, two summers ago, I took pictures of seven different squash or seven different beetles that were in my garden. And there was even this loads of this kind of beetle I had never seen. And when I lift them up, they are stinging. They're called stinging or burning or something like that beetles because they excrete um, almost like an acid that if you get it on your hands, it burns you or it stings you. So <laughs> I was really glad I hadn't tried to pick them off before I took care of them um, or, you know, to like, just like brush them off the, plants with my hands. I was glad I hadn't done that. Um, but what I, what I found out, um, I wish I could remember the gentleman's name. Um, in, in Missouri, there's a gentleman who has made a planting calendar that is like a slide rule. So you find your Clyde. Clyde, Clyde. Yes. So Clyde's garden planter planner. I always want to say planter. Um, you find your last frost date and you slide the calendar, the red line with that. And then it tells you when to plant out everything for your area. And then when you flip it over, it has your first frost date 
and you slide it out. So I was bemoaning the bugs and the heat to him one year when I saw him at um, a Baker Creek event. And he said, you really ought to try a fall garden. He said in Missouri, he often has more luck with his fall garden because the um, bugs go away and the weather cools off. And so I think that I might try that next year. I haven't put in a fall garden yet, but I just thought that was an interesting tidbit. Interesting to me anyway. I don't know. All right. So let's see what else. There's lots of comments that go by. I didn't... Yeah. Vicky said hornworms. Yeah. So what you call worms, we tend to call caterpillars. Right. Yeah, so... Except, except for hornworms, I think we call hornworm, hornworm caterpillars. Is that right? Do we put the both together? They're the ones right. that... Those are the ones that eat the tomatoes down yeah. to just the stems. Yeah. And, the, and the, Oh, and you can, if you use... Is it a blue black light or something? Black, black light. light. So you come out at night time is the easiest time to get them and find them because they're on the bottom of the leaves. Right. So I'm saying, hope the new place is going really well, Liz. Congratulations. Uh, looking forward to loads of uh, to uploads of your new adventure. So it's it is really really exciting to have moved, but it's also really daunting because and the, and and I keep going through waves of somewhere between nostalgia and grief because I go out into the garden and it's and it's this like excitement of creating something new again, which I like doing of taking all the lessons we learnt. And, and using them here, applying them here. But then I just get this huge wave of, oh, but that cherry tree, I bet that looks wonderful now. Or, <laughs> you know, so there are actually, there are plants that I really miss. And we've planted new ones here, but there is just, there was something, I think because that garden was actually quite magical in the end. It was so full and it was so productive and it was actually just very pretty as well mm -hmm. and there's a bit of me thinks oh will I be able to reproduce something that's that's as visually appealing um I've got to say the ground here is so much better so, <laughs> so when I first put the garden was going to put the veg garden the, the soil was just as bad as it was uh, in Monmouthshire uh, and then when I went to where we're now putting the food forest and moving all the veg to uh, I couldn't believe how lovely the soil was. So I'm hoping that Tony from Simplify Gardening uh, is going to come and see us very soon so he can experience the joy that is our soil. Because Tony came over, he he helped us put up our polyton on our old house, mm -hmm. but he also helped move a damson tree that was getting too big. It had grown from seed. And I, so I just said, could he move it into uh, over by the forest? And that one's that well, that one was broke him <laughs> because the ground was so soil uh, so stony and just so awful to dig in. Um, so you'll be pleased to see how good this is. Okay, she's chatting. I just said hello. Tamara is watching. Okay, so I said so, hello to Tamara. So, Lorella's day job. I'm a sign language interpreter. So she does. She does American sign language. I think. Yes. I think that's incredibly clever. So because it is another language, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's and quite different from English. Right. So actually, what I could do is I could get her to sign a video. Probably not, but we can. Or not? No, not <laughs> maybe because really, because she could be saying, "This has been doing this all wrong. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's making yeah. me do this. I don't want to do that, and I wouldn't know what he was saying." I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so, uh, who's this? That's my friend Tamara. Hi, just Tamara. So, good morning. Uh, yes, glad to see you spending time here with this. We've it's actually been really good because there is a risk when you know you get to know someone online, there is that risk that they're not the same in person. I do want to say though that. We talk over an app, a video chatting app, daily. A lot. Yeah, pretty much daily, probably five days a week. Yeah. And sometimes multiple, multiple times in one day and sometimes, you know, early in the morning, late at night, just out and about. So I, I feel as if when I got off the plane, I wasn't meeting you. 
I was just I hadn't seen you in a long time is what it felt yeah, like. Yes, yes, yes. No, it wasn't it wasn't like meeting someone for the right. first time, but there was that kind of and the other thing is is I don't know about you, but I am not used to spending all day and all evening with the same person multiple <laughs> days in a row. I mean, Mr. J and I don't even do that. So we've been pretty good, actually, about just kind of going off and doing a bit of work in our own space or having time to chat to friends on the phone without really being uh, like in others, each other's faces the entire time. Uh, Hugh has joined us. Hi, well, Hugh. Thank, you for, thank you for coming into the chat today. Uh, so Missouri Girl is here. Hiya, hiya. Um, I saw someone else had arrived as well. Lots of people saying hello to Hugh. Um, did I see someone else? No, no, they're all just saying Hugh. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Hugh and I chatted a bit earlier on today. Um, all things being equal, if we're if we are allowed to, and we still need to check this, uh, we may well go and film outside at, at Hugh's place. That uh, would, that's right. Um, so we can do hopefully we can do the social distancing filming outside and that'd be right that'd be absolutely great to go and do that um i would be i'm, I'm excited to do that it's gonna be a good a good a good day out uh Very so mary's exciting. here hi mary uh oh liz and everyone hugs australia here so mary where are you in australia a bit of quiet on that one. <laughs> Australia is where one place that Chris and I would like to travel together. That's somewhere that neither of us have been. And it's part of the problem would be getting enough time to be able to see. Australia is a rather big country. Huge, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so to see everything that we would like to see. But I would love to go do a tour of homesteads in, the, in oh, Australia. That, yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? So I went... Um, I went to uh, New South Wales, into the, up into the Blue Mountains and stayed with someone there. And then I spent about a week in Sydney and I did a week or so in Tasmania. So I was away for about three and a half weeks. And it went by like that. And there was, I, there was no way I saw enough. Um, and I needed to come back because I, I had deserted my children. I hadn't actually <laughs> left them. I hadn't left them on their own. Let's just clarify that. I hadn't left them on their own. But it own. feels like that. But yeah. That long. Yeah. And, and my daughter did things like getting her ear pierced while I was away. <laughs> but up here, it wasn't like <laughs> she did just all the things that she knew mum wouldn't want her to do. Um, <laughs> she did while I was away. It was like I came back and went, oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when I go away. Won't leave you too long again. <laughs> um, so Sam uh, is in Melbourne, and Mary is in Adelaide. Uh, so you really need at least a few months if you've been <laughs> to Australia. <laughs> There's so much to say. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about America, but we don't really get paid leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're a great holiday. <laughs> uh, so I saying it's fast. I went for four months many years ago. Wow. And it wasn't enough to see it all. I needed the north. Yeah. And west. I guess you just have to pick the thing you want to see and do the most and do that. Egocentric homesteads here. Higher, higher. I think it would be, I would want to go and see the, there's a, a bit up the, east <laughs> southeast coast uh where there are several uh youtubers and, and people who i've become friends with via my channel yeah um but i still haven't yet quite got the i haven't really worked out are they all in the same place or is in fact like three of them on one side there or from <laughs> from that way around, three of them on one side there <laughs> and then someone else like in a completely different place right. so. <laughs> we were looking at the map this morning or was that yesterday 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 and trying to work out uh if if there was any way that i could get a farm sitter for here whether if i came to see you so if, you know we did the reverse sorry chris <laughs> <laughs> we might have been planning this um <laughs> Uh, if I came, who we would be able to go and see without it being like a 10-hour journey to go and see 
one person. So right. So. And try and work out the path. So we have a, a road trip, but not too long of a drive every day. Yeah. And then yes, and then could we stay in a hotel overnight? Anyway, so it was an interesting exercise. <laughs> and Chris said, surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> he likes surprises so much. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, that was actually there were quite a lot of people we've been out to go and see, haven't they? Yes, depending on which direction we want to go, there's a yeah, a lot of people. So, uh, so Constantina says, uh, plan a nice garden room with a bench, preferably with climbers behind scented shrubs in front, it keeps you busy and gives you a place to bury. Your ooh, ooh. Yeah, so they're talking about a, a dog that's passed away. Yes, not like. Your friend, right. <laughs> wait a minute. I have a return ticket. <laughs> I, I'm truly not trying to make fun of a person, no, a no, no, but um, no, it was me the way I read it out. I suddenly thought, oh, no, that sounded <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> so, um, where have we got to? We've talked for nearly an hour and I haven't done anything really exciting. I'm gonna go and get something exciting. I don't know what she has exciting. I'm going to spill a little secret. Liz took me today to see part of the farm that she hasn't shown yet. And it's absolutely magical. So that's all I'm going to say. It's a yes. little teaser. They'll have to wait. Yeah. Uh, so, so it says, how long are you staying? I leave. I think it's Thursday. So it's a total, the total trip, 10 days, including my travel time. So that's about as long as Chris wanted to be alone on the farm. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I get that. And you know, Mr. Jay was saying a very similar thing. He was like, oh, who's gonna who's gonna do the animals? You know, so. <laughs> so listen, um, I used to do, used to. Well, I did a, a live chat regularly previously before having had like an almost two year break from right. regular live chats. Yep. I used to do a giveaway. Uh, oh, I used it about halfway. I used to a halfway giveaway. I don't wasn't mean it wasn't half a giveaway. It was halfway through the live chat. Uh, but we're way over halfway through the live chat. But if if you would like a copy of my book, which I would guess probably most of you have already got, but if you would like a copy of this, uh, I will do a giveaway, and I'm very happy to post this to anywhere in the world that. Has a postal service. Did you see that? I was very carefully placed. Um, just a reminder, though, uh, this giveaway uh, has is not associated with YouTube at all. Uh, this is completely independent, so it's not sponsored by, not supported by, uh, and it's nothing uh, to do with YouTube. This is purely me uh, giving away a copy of this. And I um, want to say, I love this book. Thank you. Uh, having had seen all of the videos and everything thinking I already pretty much knew your story that sitting down and reading it, it just gave me a different perspective and I found it a really lovely read. Oh, and the images you. are fantastic too. I'm surprised that you took those images yourself, most of them in the book. Maybe all of them, I don't know if you did all of them. Uh, so I took about 98, no, Mr. J and I between us took about 98% of them. There are two, possibly three images in the book that were taken by Hugh. There is one that was taken by my sister. Uh, and then the cover image um, was done by uh, Jason Ingram, who uh, was photographer of the gardening photographer of the year for last year and the year before. We won't know about this year yet because the results of that aren't out. So maybe he was year. absolutely lovely. Um, Hugh came over with him and uh was support person for the day and that was that was that was really special having that uh, taken so i'm letting everybody comment and then um how are we going to do this uh i will add up i will count how many comments there are uh, and I, I can't do it live because people will carry on commenting so right or i ask you not to look and you just give me a number and i'll count down the number of 
because I haven't taken everybody's names to do it in one of those random sets. So will you be so around? So are you only you be doing around? it for the people who say they want a copy? Yeah. Of everybody? Yeah. If people want a copy. If people want my book or they'd love a copy or something, we'll just go through and randomly. Are you happy for me to just assign everybody a number and for Lorella to, uh, Lorella to, to give me a, a number at random without knowing whose number has been assigned? Are you happy for me to do that and then for me to put the the answer as a as a comment or do i need to find somebody who's prepared to go all the all the random the random select there is a lovely app that you can just use but you have to enter in everybody's names are you asking me or are you no, asking I'm asking, them? I'm, no i'm telling you i'm asking them are they okay. happy for that to happen as long as they're happy for that to happen so whatever works best for us yeah okay so what we'll do is i will make sure that at the end of this, within a few minutes of this, this live chat ending, we'll go through, I'll assign everybody a, a number, uh, just assign a number that's easier for you, yeah. Um, and then I'll ask Lorella to select a number between one and whatever the top number is. And then okay. I will... Someone's I will make a comment. Well, it's not because you won't know what anybody else. You're just know, choosing a number. But it'll be my fault. <laughs> Sorry to everybody who doesn't get one in advance. <laughs> um, well, you can how about you can assign the numbers. I'll pick a number, but we'll put a either comment. way. We'll do it we'll, one or the other way. We'll so put a says. comment in, uh, letting you know who it is. So what I'm going to have to ask you to do is in about an hour or so after this live chat has ended. And obviously this is only going to apply to people who are watching this live. So if you're watching the replay, I'm really sorry, this will have already finished. Phew, glad I remember to say that. Uh, so <laughs> once it's done that, if you come back about an hour later and just check, I'll put it in the description or in, the, no, I'll put it into the description because then you haven't got to scroll all the way through the chat. So oh, right. I'll just add yeah. into the description. You will then need to contact me uh, either on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or through our website, bythefarm.com, to give me details of how uh, of where you want that sent to. That's a good idea. So I am on Twitter as Liz Zorab, which will possibly at by the farm one or the other. Instagram, it's Liz underscore Zorab underscore really silly thing to have done all these uh by the underscore farm so lots of underscores in between uh you can find me on facebook uh, at by the farm uh, page or in my group which is friends of this or by the farm so you can do all of those but the important thing for today is not any of those contact details it's how you contact lorella so uh you are on facebook Facebook as my name, Lorella Cruz, C R E W S, or our farm page, Plan B Orchard and Farm with the B spelled B E E. So it's a yep. little plan words there. YouTube, Lorella Plan B Orchard and Farm, same thing, B E. And the link of that is the top link in the description uh, for this live chat. Instagram, same name. And that's all currently. Brilliant. So I'm going to, once again, really, really encourage you to, to subscribe to her on social media. Please subscribe to her channel. And most importantly, don't just subscribe, but go and watch a video or two. It does seem to be that um, if you subscribe to a channel and then don't watch any videos for a week or so, you get unsubscribed. I don't know whether that actually happens or not. Uh, but certainly if I want to make sure that I stay subscribed to a channel, I go and watch a couple of videos. Uh, and then that seems to tell YouTube that you really do want to to, to be there, that you haven't subscribed on the state. So. And I just want to say thank you because I just looked at myself now 15 since we started the live chat. So Fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you so much. So we have run over the hour. I am going to ask Lorella to do uh, another live chat with me that will be purely uh, for patrons uh, over on Patreon. Thank you, for Chrissy, for she's just popped up your channel. Thank you. Thanks, there. Chrissy. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, so we will do another much slower, much quieter uh, 
Patreon live chat uh, in the next few days. So I'll post on Patreon uh, about when that will be. And um, and as soon as uh, we get off here, we'll start doing the okay. counting and ascribing numbers. <laughs> Um, so Jane is saying she's just got hit. Oh, Jane, so sorry. We are, we've been talking, or I've been talking, and I've been letting Lorella have a few moments in between. I feel really rude that I've talked so much. Oh, I, before we, you haven't been rude at all. I've, thank you for carrying the conversation so that I didn't have to say too much. I just want to know, Missouri girl, uh, are you currently still in Missouri? And if so, uh, what area are you near? Because I wonder if we're near to each other. She says she just found me. So Good. if we give her a second to answer that mm -hmm. before we log out, that's fine. And then um, also, if you subbed, if you leave me a comment, then I can look up your channel too when I have a, a chance. <laughs> if we end up getting Vicky, she said I could just bring the book back to her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one more thing will fit in my suitcase because I was not willing. I started to say too cheap. I was not willing to pay to check a bag. So I came with a carry on and a backpack. And that included all my camera equipment. So she can always leave some of that behind. <laughs> She's been a little bit envious of my gimbal. I have, yeah. So thank you so much for joining Farming us today. Uh, as I said, uh, the link for Lorella's channel uh, is in this video description, in the live chat description. And we will be back very shortly uh, with the name of the person who has won the giveaway today. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, my brother-in-law was on there at the end. How nice. Oh, well, welcome. Welcome and sorry we didn't have yeah. for any longer. That's Jason. I'll just tag him. He says, LOL. <laughs>